corners. Guy Martin now looking to get in on the act if he can. So the youngster from Lincolnshire looking for a way up on his fellow Lincolnshire man, of course, Steve Plater. The two boys, uh, well, Guy Martin is a bit of a revelation over the last few years here on the roads in Ireland. Uh, he left the mainland Britain behind to a certain extent and came out here and has made a real name for himself on the roads. And Guy Martin, last lap now, that was what the flag was, the yellow flag with the black diagonal on it, that is the last lap signifying so. It's and all down to a real sprint. Yeah, and the signal to just not take any prisoners now. These four, it's going to be one of these four that wins this race, three of them on the podium. Away we go, John McGuinness looking good, but Steve Plater, I am sure he's just biding his time as the black lines are laid down as they oh. go over the top of the hill. And that number one Yamaha wriggling a little bit. That's often when you get the bike landing a bit crooked when it takes off. Martin. Yeah. Guy Martin, I'll tell you what, Plater knew he was coming there. He just must have seen his shadow. And Plater left him enough room to go under him if he was brave enough. But as it turns out, Guy Martin managed to pull it all down and stayed in third place. But certainly, that was a smart move from Plater. He just gave him enough room should he come bouncing up the inside. Always a wise thing to do there, as that, uh, those curves are hard, as Bruce Anstey found out. OK, off we go. Now we're on to the section where it will be the highest speed that's achieved around this circuit. The hundreds of thousands of spectators all hanging over the fences and hedges here, watching this terrific battle. Leading, not always the best place to be, of course, on this section of the track, because you create the biggest slipstream for everybody behind you, and that is what they're going to be trying to do. They're going to be trying to feel the slipstream, the big hole being punched through the air by John McGuinness in front, as they slowly build, build, build on it. Of course, the man in third place, Guy Martin, may have the biggest advantage here. He's good on the brakes, and if he can pick up the slipstream of the AIM Yamaha in front of him, Steve Plater, and, of course, both of them picking up the slipstream of your race leader, John McGuinness, it could be Guy Martin as the biggest uh, benefit, but... Uh, He's not really sitting in with them, is he? No, he isn't. And also, if you can get it at the right point, because you can see they're weaving from one side of the track to the other, because that's because the track actually curves around. And there's the pass oh. through on the brakes again. Around the outside goes Steve Plater. Underneath goes Guy Martin. It's all any which way you like at this particular point. It's real short circuit racing here on the roads now, because we are on the last lap. We're halfway round the last lap. Valley Sally roundabout next up. The magic roundabout. Here we go. Steve Plater. Flames flying out the back of the IA Yamaha. And that is Steve Mellor's prepared motorcycle. Steve Mellor, once of B&M, of course, uh, and you'll remember him if you're into motorcycling at all. And uh, now the preparation done solely by Steve Mellor and the team at AIM, and really oh, that kind of lead as he buzzes off down towards Mathers. <laughs> McGuinness and Martin have got a lot of work to do. I don't think John McGuinness really did defend that line very much. I think he's also the man that knows that the Metropole, that's where it's going to be, and you can see oh, the Hydrex Honda wriggling around, just not very stable there, and that was because the air was all being upset by John McGuinness being beside him. These motorcycles, they're really kind of like an arrow through the air at these speeds, but once that air gets disturbed, they really start wriggling around. Right, now John McGuinness has the speed with the HM Plant Honda. Can he close that gap down? It's closing all the time, and in the braking area, that's where it'll all happen. I'm watching Michael Rutter in fourth place at the moment. If Rutter could do something on the brakes, oh, Guy Martin who's just Martin. superb on the brakes. He's going to go under. McGuinness as well. That's going to be a real spoiler. That might let... Oh, and he pushed him up the road. John McGuinness has gone through the chicane. John McGuinness will now take not much further part in this race as far as the podium is concerned. Rutter may well get on the final step of the podium, but really, Guy Martin on the brakes there was superb, and he's nerfed John McGuinness up the slip road. Yeah. He's let Plater off because I think McGuinness was building for a bit of a challenge on Plater on this corner now. Metropole corner. Corner. If Plater gets through here neat and tidy, it's going to be <laughs> Plater, surely. The lap that was a tough move at the end of that because that was a tough move and I said that John McGuinness was a gentleman racer. Oh, and he, look Steve at that, the Plater dust fly. Banks the curve. That is incredible. Steve Plater, does he want to win this? Uh, not much. Oh, and the tyres will be dirty now. He'll be thinking about that. But he was right in the bottom of that gutter as he came through church there. That was incredible. But Plater now got his head down. What could Guy Martin do? Guy Martin for sure will be embarrassed about that move on Jonathan, John McGuinness. <laughs> I'd be surprised if he was embarrassed. I'd be surprised if uh, Guy Martin wants to mess with Steve Plater in this particular move. We're at Juniper now at the Juniper chicane. This is for the last time. This is the last lap. Just a couple of corners left to go for Steve Plater to take this win again. And he's just under his own lap record. Uh, so, Steve Plater absolutely determined to do whatever it takes. He is on fire, quite literally. He spanked the curb. Yes, he says, I know. I've taken the win. And through comes Michael Rutter for third place behind number eight guy, Martin. John McGuinness, oh, he's mad the way he flicked his visor up then. John McGuinness definitely is not a happy man. He's been beaten up by Plater and then beaten up by Guy Martin. He's gone straight down the slip road to the pits. Thank <laughs> you.
Well, there's confirmation of the results. Steve Plater takes his third Superbike win. Uh, Guy Martin comes in second place. Michael Rutter third. John McGuinness down the slip road gets in fourth. That's the problem with a three lap race, you know, you have to take the chances. That's the unfortunate part of it, you know, whether it's a six lap race, you'd have given them the, you know, the, a breath of fresh air and a little bit of room, but you just cannot afford to do that. Smilers on top of, top of the podium again tonight. You better believe it.